Well, that was a movie. Hello and welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon, and today I'm giving my first thoughts on Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which is, of course, the sequel to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and was written by Chris Miller and Phil Lord. So, of course, I think everybody's well aware of the first one and now the sequel, but in, in case you don't know, it follows Miles Morales while he deals with the Spider-Verse, which is what they call their version of the metaverse that pertains predominantly just to Spider-Man, various Spider-Men through various universes, and their interactions with each other that has pretty big implications across all of the universes, but I'm not going to get into spoilers yet. I will get into that in a couple minutes, but I just want to give it a basic review first in case you don't want anything spoiled. But anyway, first off, when the first one came out, I enjoyed it. I think everybody did. It got pretty much universal praise from critics and fans alike. A lot of people were even saying that it was the best Spider-Man movie ever, and now the sequels come out, and it might have even more praise. It's got a 9.0 on IMDb currently and something like an 86% on Metacritic. So I had to see it. I wasn't able to see it the opening weekend because I had a wedding and there was a bunch of other stuff going on. So I was just busy. And to be honest, I wasn't in a huge rush to see it because even though I am a fan of the first one, I only ever watched it the one time. I, I saw it when I came out and I enjoyed it. I never really had much of a desire to go back to it, but I was curious about the sequel, so here I am. I just saw it, and I gotta say, I enjoyed this one too. I don't know that I'm going to be in a rush to rewatch this, but I can say it's a very, very well-made movie. I think everybody is already talking about it, but the animation is fantastic. I will say the frame rate of it at times gave me a little bit of a headache. It kind of was annoying. It was just too few frames, but uh, I think people enjoy that, the uniqueness of it, and the obvious expert skill that went into all of these different kinds of animation because these Spider-Man, depending on what universe they're coming from, are in various styles, various animation styles, much like in the first one. There is some confusion there to me, though, because as you see, Spider-Gwen is in, if not the same animation style as Miles Morales' Spider-Man, a very similar one, but then when she's seen in her universe in this movie, it's a different animation style in her universe, so why doesn't that translate to all the universes like the other animation styles do? But regardless of the inconsistencies and it not quite making sense, the animation is fantastic and I really enjoy seeing the various styles of animation. I mean, very early on in this movie, we see this hand-drawn character interacting with these faux hand-drawn characters. I mean, maybe he was faux hand-drawn too, but a different style of hand-drawn, much more like penciled. So he's kind of just like pencil on like brown paper type, like they think he's like made out of like paper mache or something so it's it's a very interesting and unique visual compared to the rest of the movie which is also unique i mean we've got a couple of brief snippets here you've probably heard about it where they did it in stop motion lego mation which was another reason i knew i needed to see this movie because the story behind that is when the trailer was released for this movie a youtuber a 14 year old kid actually made a stop motion lego mation video of the trailer recreating it shot for shot and apparently the producers and the writers were so impressed that they wanted him to come and make a scene for them in the movie and sure enough he did and that to me is just so heartwarming and so interesting and so much fun I had to see that scene at least especially for somebody like me that was like my first passion my first love the earliest movies I ever made as a kid were involving Legos and eventually teaching myself stop-motion based off of what I'd seen on you know YouTube and stuff so seeing that was like that's so cool that's something that it just resonated with me personally but I mean even as just I, I'm pretty sure everybody enjoys stuff like that all the various different kinds of animation were so much fun to see and you know the different frame rates that people were at because not everybody's the same frame rate which is part of why it gave me a headache just so cool to see so interesting even if sometimes it can be a little bit too much I feel like it's still it's just a lot of skill a lot of expertise went into that and you have to marvel at it even if it's not really your thing like I'm not a huge animation guy but I can still look at it and go like wow that's really impressive I also have to applaud the voice acting. The voice acting in this movie, as well as the first one, were both fantastic. I, I really should go over the cast, because I didn't, but uh, Shamik Moore plays Miles Morales, Haley Steinfeld, of course, is Gwen Stacy, Brian Tyree Henry is Jeff Morales, it's got Luna Lauren Velez, Jake Johnson, Oscar Isaac, Jason Schwartzman, Issa Rae, Daniel Kaluuya, 
Karen Sony. It's just it goes on and on. Uh, Marshal Ali also has a small role. It's it's just such a great cast, and they're all fantastic. They're not just big-name actors in an animated movie. They are big-name actors putting in great, fantastic voice acting performances in this movie as well. What about the plot? Is, or what, what, is it worth the hype? Is it as good as the first one? Is it better than the first one? What is it? So, it's good. I would say... <sighs> It's hard to say that it lives up to the hype because, like I said, the hype is currently in 9.0 and I don't agree with that, but that's not to say it's bad. I think it's just as good as the first one in every way. It felt just like more of the first one. It didn't really feel like a sequel, it just felt like a continuation on. It felt like another part, like another episode of a series or something. So, like, is it better, is it worse than the first one? Neither, really, it's just more. It just continues on. And so I think, really, honestly, that's kind of just what people want. When you, when you think of a sequel in your head, you're kind of just imagining another of the same thing that's different enough so that you're not bored, and that's exactly what this is. The story was still unique, it was expanding in its own different direction, but it maintained the same flair, the same style, the same allure as the first one did. So in every way, I think it is a completely compatible and worthy sequel to the first one. I don't know exactly why it's got a better rating and it's considered better at least right now than the first one. I mean, what was the rating for the first one? The first one has an 8.4 and an 87%. This one has a 9.0 and an 86%. So I think when all things are said and done, they probably will have pretty much the same rating. But right now, it does have a slightly higher rating, and I don't think it will stay there. I think they'll level out around the same. But regardless, like I said, it is worthy of, of being said in the same sentence as the first one because to me, it just felt like more of the same, which if you liked the first one, and most people did, then that's a great thing. I don't know that it's changing people's minds. You know, like I I am in the camp that that still prefers the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies for whatever reason. I mean, these movies are practically perfect in every way. I think it's just different flavors for different people. For me, I just prefer the Tobey Maguire, Sam Raimi, Spider-Man movies, and if you do, your mind won't be changed by this because it's still more of the same of the first one. And if that was already your favorite, then this will continue to be part of that. And if your favorite was Andrew Garfield or Tom Holland, everybody's got a different favorite and that's a fine thing. I saw this like meme recently or this comic or whatever, where it's like a guy makes a cake and he's like, oh, it's not as good as the other guy's cake and then it's like and then the customer comes in like ooh two cakes that's how we should just treat spider-man who cares which one's the best one they're all so much fun except for a couple of the movies aren't too great but like <laughs> i really just think a big part of what makes this movie and the first one works so much is just the dynamics between characters there's a lot of jokes there's a lot of chemistry at its core though i really just the interactions, especially between Gwen Stacy and, and Miles Morales, are just so good. Like, I was sitting there going, like, I just want, like, a chick flick, almost. Like, a, just a rom-com with these two characters. Because, yeah, Spider-Man's fun, and fighting bad guys is great, and the multiverse is cool and all, but, like, I just want to see these characters interact. And it goes for all of the characters, really. There's no boring character. There's no bad character in this movie. You just want to hear and see more about all of them. The one thing I will say is that if you were a big fan of some of the characters in the first one, they kind of get left behind a little bit in this. There's an addition of a lot of a lot of characters, and so some of the side characters from the first one either don't have any lines at all or have greatly diminished lines in this one. Like in the first one, my favorite character was probably Peter B. Parker, and he's limited in this movie. He's he's not nearly in this movie as much as he was in the previous one. And we're seeing a little bit more of other people. We have plenty of new characters that are just as interesting and fascinating to watch though so i wouldn't be too worried about that it's just it's a good movie it is a good movie so go ahead and check it out i'm going to get into spoilers now for a few minutes so if you want to hang out a little bit extra please do but if you don't want anything spoiled please click away now but please remember to like share and subscribe if you're new here thanks guys bye so spoilers um yeah, so I, I didn't rewatch the first one. I probably should have because there was a couple seconds there of trying to remember what was going on exactly. But um, in case you somehow don't know, there's a bug in here. Bug just fell on me from the ceiling. That was weird.
<laughs> but anyway, in case you didn't know, um, this is a part one of a part two. Originally, they said that in the title, and then they ended up changing the title. So it's um, Across the Spider-Verse, and then the next one will be Beyond the Spider-Verse. Originally, it was Across Part 1 and Part 2. It's not that anymore, but there's still a to-be-continued at the end of this movie. So if you're unprepared for that, be prepared for that. Um, I actually kept thinking that this movie was going to end sooner than it did. We got a lot of information uh, to choose on after this movie and it's all good it's it's a interesting story um we start talking about you've probably seen the memes about canon events because we're interacting with different multiverse things and there's certain things that have to happen in order for that universe to maintain its balance and continue to exist, frankly, and these are called canon events. So certain things like Uncle Ben has to die or whatever your alternative version of that is, whether it's a different uncle or I guess in the Tom Holland it's Aunt May uh, was the Uncle Ben character because they kind of swap places. That character has to die in order to maintain balance. Um, a police captain that you're that Spider-Man is close to emotionally, he has to die or things fall into disarray. So uh, Miles Morales accidentally, without knowing that to be fair, changes a canon event in one of the universes and now that universe is starting to collapse. And so they teach him about this, he finds out that, so now he thinks that the police officer in his life that has to die is his father because that's the only police officer that he's close with. So now he wants to get back to his universe so he can stop that from happening. Um, but the rest of the Spider-Man don't want him to stop it because if he stops it, they think that the entire universe could collapse and then affecting the rest of the universes in the multiverse. This is speculation on my part because this will be resolved in the next movie. I think they reference to him as the anomaly because he wasn't supposed to be Spider-Man. He wasn't supposed to exist. The whole reason he became Spider-Man was he was bitten by a spider that was from a different universe. So in his universe already, there already was a Spider-Man. So he already went through all those tropes. So I'm thinking that it doesn't need to happen. So I think that's going to be what is going to take place in the next one is he's going to continue to be the anomaly and the police or his dad won't have to die. It's like, well, his uncle did die. So that's part of the canon thing. Okay. That could have just also just happened. Maybe his uncle just died. That doesn't mean his dad does have to die. So that's just my theory, but we're not there yet anyway. So basically, yeah, that's the plot. Um, him trying to get back. There's a super villain he created by accident, apparently at the end of the first one who is now, um, trying to kill him. I wasn't talking to you. Like I was saying in the non-spoiler section, I just, I enjoy the Gwen Stacy, Miles Morales dynamic so much, especially Gwen Stacy. I think she's so well-crafted in this movie. Like she's just so effortlessly likable that like, I think I did hear that they were going to make a movie just about her. And I really hope they do because her character is just so enjoyable, so much fun. Um, and I did enjoy her arc cause she's got her own arc with her dad where she had to leave her universe. Um, kind of just ran away from home almost. And I really, I just enjoyed the family dynamics from both her side as well as Miles Morales with his family. There's just this movie. I mean, there's obviously, not feel good moments about it, but it just emits like feel good energy where it's like, I just feel good after seeing it. Like I just feel warm and fuzzy. Like I just enjoyed seeing the characters. Like I care about the characters, which kind of surprised me how much I cared about these characters, how much I enjoyed seeing these characters again. Like I said, after only seeing the first one once, that's good writing. There's something about these characters that just sticks with you, that you enjoy seeing them again and you want to see them again, no matter how long it's been. So yeah, I mean, that's really all there is to it. It's a well-made movie, extremely expertly crafted movie filled with great writing and humor and brilliant performances, absolutely amazing animation. I don't know. It was just enjoyable. Okay. That's all I'm trying to say. Even if you like me come away from it, not thinking, wow, that's a nine, because to me, in order to be a nine, it has to be like a life changing changing movie this isn't to me you'll still come away just happy that you saw it just having enjoyed every minute of it and it's it's a long movie especially from an animated movie actually frankly i just read it is the longest animated movie released in america ever so yeah it's 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 pretty long it's two hours and 20 minutes which for an animated movie is very long part of why it took so long to make but yeah it's just enjoyable and you will enjoy every minute of that two hour and 20 minute runtime so anyway yeah i just wholly recommend it even if you weren't a huge fan of the first one i think you'll still like this one too i know i did so yeah 
Check it out and let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, guys.